Shimano has asked me to build another bike, but this time they want me to keep the performance as high as possible and try and keep the price down a little bit. What am I gonna pick, do you reckon? What style of bike is it gonna be? Stay tuned to find out. So previously, I built my interpretation of a cross-country bike that I would ride, and that was based around a Yeti SB100 frame. I put a longer travel fork on it, some bigger tires, and that sort of stuff, and yeah, awesome bike. Following that, Shimano asked me to build an ultimate trail bike. Now this was, was easy because I'm a trail bike rider through and through. Uh, so I picked a Mondraker frame and I put a combination of XT, XTR on it, even some Industry 9 wheels. Man, that thing is absolutely smoking. But this time they were like, look, can you just wind it back a bit? You might have gone a bit far on the last one. So what they've asked me to do is build a bike with the highest possible performance, but then really consider where I spend the money on the bike. Now. I'm thinking here, when they tell me this, I'm thinking of who's the bike gonna be for? What sort of rider needs to save cash and where do they need to save the cash? But I'm also thinking about the product managers that spec on bikes. Because let's face it, when you buy a bike from a manufacturer, whoever that may be, you're gonna get the best possible price on stuff because that manufacturer, when they buy things like Shimano components, they buy in such quantities that the discount that they get when they put the stuff on the bikes enables them to charge you a price for the bike that you can't beat if trying to do the same thing in a custom build. So I'm not trying to build the cheapest bike here by any means. I'm just trying to build a bike that I think represents really good value that offers the best possible ride and most importantly, because I'm not going to cut any corners in terms of componentry and spec, I'm just going to be specking things that are readily available uh, around the world, easily sourceable. So, you know, if you're on a riding trip in France and you break something, you can replace that part of the bike, no problem. Uh, and also products that have really good warranties on them, which I think are all things that people look for. Oh, now hopefully that is the frame. Let's have a look. Okay, so the frame I have chosen is a Commercell Meta SX. Uh, I've got a bit of a history of Commercell bikes. I've had several in the past, always loved them, but the key to this particular frame and why I want to build this is the person it's aimed at. So could be someone who wants to do a bit of casual uplift riding, a bit of hammering, maybe an enduro race, hitting bike parks and stuff like that. The sort of rider that doesn't want to have to be replacing parts all the time, the sort of rider that smashes mechs off, the sort of rider that gives wheels loads of punishment, the sort of rider that wants to hit big jumps and session downhill tracks. That is what I'm building this bike for, and it's gonna be a really good, fun build. Now, a bit about the frame. This one is running 160 mil travel on the rear. Well, it will be when I build it. Uh, 170 mil fork is kind of geared for on the front end there. Now, angle-wise, 78 degree seat angle, so good for climbing or winching up to the top. 63 and a half degree on the front there. But the point is, alloy frame, designed to take a hammering, and dare I say it, a very, very cool frame too. Okay, shock absorber then. Now, my original plan was to put this shock on, a Bomber CR. Now, this shock retails for around 315 quid in the UK. It's an absolute bargain. Now, of course, you have to buy a core spring to go with it, but something very important to say is that not all frames are compatible with core shocks. Now, there's a combination of reasons why you won't be able to put one of these on there. Um, when it comes to the linkage of the bike itself. Now, in this particular one, it's got a yoke, so it's like a clever style yoke that drives the shock there. Now, the length of that versus the shock stroke versus the eye to eye, there are three factors that come into account here because you don't want to be putting additional strain on a shock, essentially. So, unfortunately, I can't use this shock on this particular bike. However, I do want to tell you a bit about it because of the fact I think it's such a bargain at the price. So, it's very similar to the original Fox Vanilla RC. Got compression, got damping. Simple shock, very easy for shock tuners to shim and tune this to make it feel as good as the top pro shocks. So if you're looking for a core shock, maybe even a secondary shock for your bike, that is an absolute bargain and worth looking at. So the shock I have chosen though, I've gone for the nearest possible to this, and I've gone for the Marzocchi Bomber Air Shock. Now this one, like the Core Shock, has two basic adjustments on it. You've got rebound and you've got your compression. It also has this asymmetrical, like an almost like an offset piggyback on it, which is quite cool. Now one of the reasons they've done this is because the dial they've got to adjust the compression, you can quickly flick it all the way to the right, like a lockout lever. So it's adjustable compression and a lockout almost in one, and hopefully that is gonna fit a treat on this bike. I've designed it to take a hammer in, just like the bike, so let's get it on. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, forkwise, I have gone for a Marzocchi Z1 bomber. It's gonna pair up beautifully with that rear shock on there. And there's a few reasons I've chosen this fork. Uh, well, let's talk about the color first. Let's just be shallow about things. The original Z1 bomber came in that really cool orange color. And obviously they had different colors later on. Uh, this one's available in black or red has to be the red, doesn't it? You need to know that this one is a Z1 bomber. Now it's available in two options, coil sprung and air sprung. I just like the way that you can tune the air spring and it's gonna feel a bit more akin to the back end of the bike. Now the cool thing about this damper is it actually recirculates oil in the lowers. It uses the same lower leg oil as it does in the actual damper, which means it's lubricating the fork the entire time. That's one of the keys to this thing, feeling so good and staying feeling that good. Easily serviceable by any Fox or Marzocchi service agent anywhere in the world. So this one's running 170 mil travel. You can tune it up to 180 or take it down to short travel modes. Let's get it on the bike. So I've gone for some pro handlebars. These ones are 800 millimeters wide, five degree up sweep, nine degree back, and a 31.8. So I go along with a the theme of trying to save money but keep performance high. The pro stuff is really good value for money and it's excellent quality. Um, I think the bars are about 35 quid here in the UK and the stem is about the same price. So, crankwise on this bike, you probably noticed I just put a press fit bottom bracket in. Now, a lot of people have issues with press fit bottom brackets, but the truth is, they work perfectly well. It's all down to the installation. So I use the correct tool for the job there, and it's gonna be fine. Now, this particular crank is a deal, but it's got a 30 tooth chainring on it, and I know that the rider on this won't want the 30 on there, so we're swapping it out for a slightly bigger ring. Do like using this system. Nice and simple, splined interface, not like the old days where you used to have uh, multiple chain rings on there and chain ring bolts and stuff like that. So 32 is gonna go on in place. That tool goes in place. Slide it onto here. I like to use it on a vise because I know I can get it nice and tight. Some people prefer to do this with a spanner. One of the things I've always loved about the Shimano bottom bracket system is just that simple preload cap. Now, there's a few different tools you can use for this, but I love using these simple ones. And you literally just have to be careful not to score the crank on the way past, but it just means you can easily preload it and get it just right. I'm picking a largely deal transmission on the bike. It works excellently. And when you're hammering this stuff, you're obviously gonna wear it out as consumable parts. It means it's cheaper to replace. So when you're doing a frame build like this, you wanna consider your cable routing before you get stuck into it. Uh, little things like the grommets that go on the actual cable entry ports at the front, you can have single ones or double. So think about how many hoses and cables you're running and obviously go with the minimals because you want it to look nice and neat. Also down the bottom here, they've got little sort of uh, holders to secure the cables in place that will stop them rattling on the inside. So it's key to get things going through. Right, let's get First one in place, we're gonna put the routing in for the rear derailleur and then get the brakes on there. Okay, for my transmission, I've gone for Dior 12 speed. Uh, as explained earlier, chain cassette, uh, crank, chain ring, and rear derailleur. But for the shifter, I've gone for a trusty XT. Now having a really high-end shifter gives you an amazing shifting performance. Don't forget you get the feel from the shifter, the derailleur will perform exactly the same as an XTR. It's just a bit heavier, and we don't care about that for what this bike is gonna be doing. All about the feel though, so you get the high performance at the bars. Now I'm mating this up with SLX brakes. So the Dior brakes are great, but SLX four pots are just that bit 
better. The finish on them is really good and they're really powerful and they look incredible. They look as good as the XTs, I think. Okay, so time for the wheels. Now, given that this is for a hard hitting bike and also this one is a sort of mixed wheel size, so that's a smaller wheel on the back and a bigger wheel on the front, had to get a dedicated set of wheels. So I've chosen a set of wheels from Hunt, a British company. These ones are enduro wide wheel sets. So they currently make these in 27 and a half and in 29. This is one of the first mixed pairs they're doing. Micro spline hub, obviously, because I'm running Shimano on here. And they've got extra thick T6 axles on them, so really quite burly. That is going to be a good thing because that's going to make the bearings last longer because they've got the better support. Rims are 33mm external, 31mm internal, also made from T6 alloy. So going for tyres, I've already got laying around that, to be fair, I'm not going to use. So I've got a good supply of tyres. These are 2.6, they're absolutely massive. But I'm going to be running quite a lot of sealant in here and we're going to treat the rider to a pair of inserts as well. I've got a few down there. Okay, so here it is, the bruiser of a bike. Now, I've built this deliberately for the sort of uplift style rider, the sort of one that really wants to hammer the Alps and things like that. So hopefully you can see what I've picked on here and my reasoning behind it. Now, as far as price goes, I didn't set a budget. That wasn't the aim of it. It was just to try and build a super bike and make it fairly affordable. Now, I use for affordable and inverted commas because you can buy one of these off the peg for just under 3,400 quid in the UK and it's amazing value. And like I said at the beginning of the video, you can't really beat that sort of thing. But looking at online pricing, like not the retail pricing of these, uh, online pricing, I've priced this up as 3595, not including the tires, the saddle or the grips. The grips were mine, so let's just leave that alone. Uh, tires, the same thing. Again, tires are gonna be a generic price anywhere, whatever. And the saddle, full disclaimer, Physique sent me a saddle for the Mondraker video for the, the other bike build, and they actually sent me it twice. So I just chucked it on here because I had a spare one. Um, but there you go. The aim wasn't to do it as cheap as possible, but it was to make a bike that's hopefully got really sensible decisions. So it's got burly wheels on it and they're alloy rims. So even if they do get creased when you're hitting stuff, you're gonna be fine with them. Of course, they're regular spokes, so easy to repair. The transmission speaks for itself. Dior is excellent. It's 12 speed, so you're gonna be great for up and down. Easy to replace. You're not gonna cry when you smash that rear mech. Suspension, 
absolutely brilliant. You can get these serviced anywhere in the world. You can get parts for them anywhere in the world. And these things will keep on trucking. They are excellent front and rear. Um, same cockpit, no frills, and it's got really good anchors on it. Four pot SLX. But unfortunately, I'm not gonna be riding this one. Someone else is gonna take it for a proper thrashing. Thanks, Doddy. We're here in Finale Liguri, the birthplace of Enduro. Known for its loose, rough, rocky trails, the perfect place to put a bike through its paces. Powerful brakes and quality suspension are essential for riding this sort of terrain at speed and should keep me upright. Done and dusted here in Finale Ligure. And you know what? I have properly put this bike to its limits. So first up, thank you Shimano for sending over some great components to build it up with. It just goes to show that you don't need an all singing, all dancing bike to go out and hammer those trails and really have some fun. You can build a great bike up on a budget and absolutely ride any trail that you want to. So we're done, we're out of it. Let me know what you thought in the comment down below. But for now, I'm out. Thanks a lot everyone and I'll see you next time.